Before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called the Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. being above my body and slamming back into it. So yes, absolutely. I've had this experience before. I hope I'm stitching this right. This is my first stitch, by the way. Um, you guys, you should check out her for full story. This girl talks about a situation where she was just having a normal night with her girlfriend at the time. They were in their house making spaghetti, of all things, like a meal that we all make from time to time. And she basically felt herself like come out of her body and then slam back into her body. And she had this thought that, why am I back here again? And I've got to do things right this time. Okay, so again, I've had this experience, experience as well. She says she thinks she sounds insane. I agree. Like, I feel like my experience, I, I feel like it makes me sound crazy too. So don't worry about that. But I will say this. Okay, for those of you who only know me through my YouTube channel, Esoteric Atlanta, you, you might think that I'm just this like weirdo that does deep dives into dead people, basically spying on those that have lived before us. Um, but that's really not been the bulk of my, my life, my adult life. I've always enjoyed conspiracies and enjoyed history and enjoyed urban legends. I'm pretty smart. Um, but for most of my adult life, especially my 20s and my 30s, I have spent studying Eastern philosophy and traditional yoga. Um, I always say people don't go to yoga classes because they're happy. Like I, I from a very young age, was very um, unsure about the world that we're in. And I definitely, you know, my, my boyfriend always says that um, the original yogis were the original conspiracy theorists because they knew something wasn't right. And so my yearning to understand, like, why am I here has brought me into this world, deeply into this world of traditional yoga and traditional Eastern philosophy. And so I have spent the bulk of my adult life practicing this idea of what they call Prakriti and Purusha. So that the body, my identity is Bryce, everything, my biological makeup, my family lineage, this is all part of Prakriti, which is nature, the Shakti. Whereas Purusha or the Shiva is something very different. It's the soul. And basically the idea behind Eastern philosophy is that your existence, your physical manifestation, your simulation, your body, your life, your name, your race, your gender, your sexual, everything in your life that you think is you is not actually you. It's just an experience for this life, right? It's like I, I, I use the example of like going to an amusement park, right? You go to the amusement park and you, you ride these different rides and you're picking these different simulations for the experience, for the adrenaline rush. And that's kind of what Prakriti is. And the soul, Parusha, uses the experience of the nervous system, of the emotional body to refine itself, even though it does not experience the friction of being human, right? That's why Parusha is often called the watcher or the seer, whereas Prakriti and Shakti become the seeable, the watchable, right? And so bearing that in mind, I had spent... At this point, over 10 years, daily studying this, daily meditating on this, daily working in my body to try to understand and rise above the attachments of mortal life while it's still experiencing mortal life. Well, during this time, it's like 2015-ish, I um, had gone through a very hard breakup, like a very, I was very depressed about this breakup for 
a long time. You know how there's some like breakups where you get over them pretty quickly, but then there are others that take a while to mourn. This was one of those that took a while for me to like grieve. And at the same time, I'm also deep in this practice where I'm trying to understand that my emotional body is merely an experience and isn't real, even though the emotions feel real because the nervous system is real. Like this is deep philosophy. And so I'm, I'm riding the waves of this emotional breakup where I'm heartbroken and I'm depressed and I, it's like daily, you know? And so I'll never forget. So all these two things are happening at once. I'm in the, I'm in the, the depth of despair while also deep in this traditional practice trying to understand that the suffering is merely an experience for my soul. So I'm driving. I used to live in this little apartment right on the border of Midtown and Buckhead, uh, uh, a couple miles up from where I live now. It was this cute little apartment. I lived there by myself. I loved this place. It was, it was, I love this little apartment. But you would have to come off of Peach Street, which is one of our main streets here, and you would have to kind of drive down this like long road. It was almost like a driveway that brought you back to where I lived. And so I'll never forget, I was driving. It was sunny outside, which isn't saying much. It's sunny a lot here in the South. And I remember what I had on. I had on black yoga pants and a black top. Um, I think I had just come back from teaching, to be honest with you guys. But I was driving down this driveway, this road off of Peachtree in my car. And I was in that even though I was going about my day, I was in that grief process of the breakup. And all of a sudden, I felt myself rise above my body like as I'm driving. So it wasn't like I left my body. There was still an anchor in my body driving. And what happened felt like two seconds, but it also felt like an eternity at this simultaneously, right? So we know time isn't real. So time on this earth, this was probably like two seconds. Time in, in the ether may be a little bit longer. So I had this thing where I rose up above my body and as my body was still anchoring down, so I was still in control of the car, but I felt my energy just rise up. And in that moment, I had this clarity and I started to, my lower self kind of started to laugh because I realized, truly understood we call it in the yoga sutras, it's called prativa, a flash of illumination. And this flash of illumination in my, the, the, the deep despair of my, my being, I realized that this was all a simulation of my own doing, of my own doing. Not me as in Bryce, like Bryce is just here riding the waves of this experience and experience, but me as in my oversoul, as my consciousness, that everything that has happened to me was something that I created in this simulation for some sort of lesson to be learned. And it wasn't effing real. It wasn't real. And this peaceful feeling as I'm above my body, this, this just peaceful, warm and fuzzy feeling just oozes over me because in that moment, because none of this grief was real, None of this stuff was real. The car wasn't real. My apartment wasn't real. It was all just a simulation, a matrix, meant that everything was going to be okay and that the end result was always going to be okay. What's that saying? In the end, everything is okay. If it's not okay, it's not the end. And I started to laugh at myself, at the ridiculousness of my own heartbreak because it wasn't effing real. It was just a simulation. And so I'm in this like pieced out state of mind. I'm above my body. And then all of a sudden, as this girl says, I slam back into my body. And for a moment in my body, I'm still kind of on this high of like, yeah, this is all BS. Like I've created all of this, but I'm starting to also come back to this place of grief. And what's unique as this girl is saying is that I remember this. Like, I remember the feeling. I remember being above my body. It's not like a dream. Like, she says it's kind of like a dream where you're trying to hold on to it. Not for me. Like, I remember everything about this. Although I can't quite now simulate that peaceful experience in my body. But that's okay. Maybe the lesson is the peace only comes at the end. So, anyway, I hope that makes sense. Let me know your experience. 
excuse me, let me know your experiences if you think this is crazy or if you've had an experience like this. Um, yeah, it's all a simulation, guys. We did this to ourselves. We're just playing out the roles that we created for ourselves to play.